the moment that rocked a city. Exactly six months ago, a deadly blast rampaged through the Lebanese capital, Beirut, killing more than 200 people and injuring thousands of others. More than 2,000 tons of poorly stored explosives in the port ignited, causing the largest non-nuclear explosion of our time. The pressure wave destroyed or damaged 200,000 homes and several hospitals, including this one, St. George, which was key for coronavirus treatment. It was among the hardest hit, being less than a mile from the epicentre of the blast. That night, medics furiously dug out patients and their colleagues from the rubble and treated the wounded in the car park, using the lights from their mobile phones. For weeks, the hospital was a building site and barely operational. While still only partially repaired, six months on, it's had to return to work with full force as it now faces a new crisis, COVID-19. A surge in cases after Christmas has pushed Lebanon's already battered healthcare system to the brink of collapse. More than 300,000 people have now been infected with the coronavirus and over 3,000 have died. Intensive care units across the country are overflowing. Bed occupancy rates are pushing 90%. The hospital, still dealing with the aftermath of the blast, has struggled to treat all the cases flowing in. Patients waiting for non-existent beds have been treated in cars, waiting rooms, or in this case, in the street outside by paramedics. Around 10 nights ago, I was working night shift and we had already, uh, all our rooms were full, the beds were at full capacity. Uh, and even the waiting area, uh, I had four patients and three of them slept on the chairs uh, and we had to give them oxygen. So they spent their night uh, on the chair. Before the blast or the coronavirus pandemic, Lebanon was already in the grips of a financial crisis caused by decades of chronic government mismanagement and corruption. The local currency has lost more than 80% of its value, some food prices have quadrupled, while over half the population now live under the poverty line. The lack of financial resources has meant that swathes of Beirut like this neighbourhood behind me remain pretty destroyed. In fact, according to the Norwegian Refugee Council, some 9,000 residences still need to be repaired. Now, while foreign aid has flooded in and there is a government compensation programme in play, many people who live here said to me they have yet to receive any financial assistance. Magruhi is one of these people. Her uncle was instantly killed when the explosion hit their apartment, which was just a few hundred metres from the epicentre of the blast. She takes us around her devastated home and says that day was far worse than anything she experienced during Lebanon's 15-year civil war. Despite being elderly and vulnerable, she says she has yet to receive any financial help from the state. The authorities insist they are working to make sure everyone will receive help, but Makruhi is not alone in feeling desperate. There have been waves of protests across the country, which last year prompted the resignation of the entire cabinet. It's left a toothless caretaker government in power. People are furious at the handling of the aftermath of the explosion and the financial crisis. More recently, they accused the authorities of failing to provide support for the poorest during a crippling three and a half week round the clock curfew. These new lockdown measures in place to halt the spread of the coronavirus are among the toughest globally. The Independent reached out to the Prime Minister's office about the financial support the government planned to offer people but has yet to receive a reply. Lebanon's caretaker Minister of Social Affairs, Ramzi Mashadafia, told local media last week that the government will give 230,000 of the poorest families a monthly stipend of 400,000 Lebanese pounds, but that's less than $50 at the current market rate. And so the situation has reached breaking point in places like Tripoli, Lebanon's poorest city, where nightly protests quickly turn into clashes with the security forces. Hundreds have been injured, one protester killed, and crowds even set fire to a municipal building.
While there is desperation in many homes across Lebanon, the real crisis remains here in the ICU wards and emergency rooms of the coronavirus main treatment facilities. Here the doctors say and the nurses tell me, even though they understand the lockdown is very hard for many people, they really have no other line of defence against this deadly virus. They are only just beginning to see the positive impact of the measures in place at the moment and they fear that if it's lifted too early, many more will die. In this hospital like St George, all their beds are full. They suffer from shortages of supplies and illness among staff. The financial crisis and the blast has impacted them too. It's two choices. Choice to come to hospital and uh, have COVID or chance to keep them home. I prefer there to keep to keep home. Please, please, just for one month, we are moving forward. We are moving forward. Uh, if we are keep on the lockdown, please stay safe, stay home. Because more people will die. Yes, more people will die. Despite these pleas, for many of the poorest, this may be an impossible request. And Lebanon may need nothing short of a miracle to pull it back from the brink. <laughs>